Hello guys, I trust uh, we are uh, all okay. At today's session, a lot of us to have a very candid discussion about uh, the changes that were done in uh, the Finance Act 2022 and how it will affect us. Uh, on this, I want to start by looking at it in two perspectives. First of all, the perspective of uh, the students. You normally tend to find that at any given point, whenever there are changes, more so when it comes to tax, you will find that, uh, say for example, students in 2023, anything that will be tested in tax, many a times we are going to base our financial year, the data will be for financial year 2022. So any amendments that uh, will be done within, uh, or rather any amendments that were done in 2022, they will tend to affect you directly. Say for example, those students who are in 2022, the students who are in 2022, we are looking at the changes that were done in financial year, financial year 2021. You see, this is how we normally tend to look at it for the perspective of uh, students, uh, if I were to start with. For example, if again you are track of 2021, any data that you're going to be examining, of course, it will be based on the financial year, on the financial year uh, 2020, 2020. So basically, this is how the setup is always, uh, unless uh, on a special cases whereby you're being tested in 2023 and you're asked, a data or a problem to solve in relation to the financial year, the 2023. No, many a times you'll find that uh, it is usually based on this, like 2023. So in that case, you'll find that you're going to be tested on the changes that were done in, uh, or rather anything that uh, was changed in 2022 is going to affect us here. Those in 2022, which are we cleared, we were looking at the financial year 2021. So on the same, same note, you'll find that uh, Whatever notes that we used in 2022 for students, taxation students, regardless of which course you are doing, regardless of which course you are doing, you will find that this year 2023, there are some notes or many rates that we used in 2022 for exams purposes will not be applied in 2023 because for 2023, we are going to adopt the changes that were done in financial year 2022 that is very important that you do understand for practical perspective you will find that for practical perspective basically we normally tend to consider if the change is done in say like january 2023 and you say that it should the effect would be from first february then for practice you should affect it from first february but for exams purposes these changes will be effected in the next financial in the next financial year. So at this point, you should be able to understand that on the perspective of exams purposes and also on the perspective of uh, practice. So uh, mentioning that, I want us to look at some of the tax updates which were affected in 2022, meaning that they will affect us directly in 2023 for students who are doing the exams and also partly for practice. So students who are doing the exams, regardless of whichever tax you're doing, CASNEB, uh, NEC, whichever component that you're doing for tax and it is within the jurisdiction of Kenya, you'll find that you should watch this video to the end. You should watch this video to the end. So after talking of that, my good students, I'll want to categorize these changes into uh, aspect of uh, almost 10 components that were changed in financial year 2022, which we must be very good at, both students and non-students. I'm really insisting on that. So these categories will include the following. Allow me to raise here. This category basically will include the following. Number one, you're going to see the changes in terms of uh, Income Tax Act, Income Tax Act changes, Income Tax Act, ITA, Income Tax Act changes. Number two, we should also be able to understand, basically it is under income tax that we'll also be looking at uh, our second schedule, which is basically capital allowances, okay? 
Number two change, we're having taxation, taxation of gains from financial derivatives. Taxation, talk about taxation of gains, taxation of gains from financial derivatives. This is now practical, financial derivatives. Number three, we should also be able to understand uh, the effect or changes that were done in, in relation to foreign exchange losses. Foreign exchange losses. Foreign exchange losses. There's also changes that were done in terms of uh, digital service tax. Digital service tax. Digital service tax. The changes that were also done in relation to some of our uh, expenses allowable for tax. Expenses allowable for tax. Expenses allowable for tax. Uh -huh. There is other changes also in relation to multinational enterprises. Multinational. Multinational enterprises. Multinational enterprises. Multinational enterprises. Also, we should be very familiar with uh, number seven, which is also in relation to capital gain. Talk about uh, capital gain tax, capital gains tax. There is also aspect to do with uh, exempt incomes. Exempt incomes. Number nine, we are having VAT changes. Remember, like, uh, there are some elements that were also uh, adjusted for VAT. And uh, also, on this other end, maybe number 10, you can talk over tax incentives. Tax incentives. Tax incentives. So basically, these are the categories of changes that uh, were done basically on uh, the Finance Act 2022. Finance Act. Finance Act. Finance Act. 2022 finance act 2022 we should be updated with these changes we should be updated with these changes so in my session today i'm going to talk more of the aspect to do with capital gain tax i'll also be talking of the income tax act so that will be my focus of class today and i'll also mention something to do with uh, what you normally what we used to refer to as a uh, uh, what we used to refer to as a uh, basically thin capitalization right the concept of tax so to start with that let us dissect this first bit income tax and for income tax i'll want to look at uh capital allowances that is uh, the second schedule in our income tax talk of uh, capital allowances in this case we're looking at uh Basically, investment allowances. Investment allowances. At this point, for students, you must be very, very keen. You must be very, very keen with the investment allowances that Molimo will want to analyze. Number one, you should be able to understand that in 2022, for exams purposes, we had this category, of course, which, uh, again, we classified it as a class A and class B. Talk about, uh, in terms of, uh, first of all, we start with uh, the normal case. We had ID, investment deductions. Investment deductions, we used to take, basically, 50% year one, then the balance on reducing balance. That was what we used, what, based on... Uh, the finance act that we are using previously, right? Where ID, we are saying that we are taking 50% year one, right? Then 25% reducing balance. But from now henceforth, like for you guys whom you are going to do exams, any tax exams in 2023, we will not do reducing balance, but instead it will be on a straight line basis straight line straight line basis straight line basis meaning that we are talking of equal installments the balance it will be on equal installments equal installments equal installments that is to say if at all i'm having an item for id 
uh, maybe going for say like a uh, hundred thousand or rather one million. Fifty percent I'm going to deduct it in year one, then twenty-five percent of the balance on a straight line basis. That is on equal installment. This is to say, for example, I'm having an asset of ID which qualifies for ID going for one million. That is to say, my year one. What are we going to have? Year one, my good students, you are going to talk of 50% of 1 million, which ideally this will give us what? 500,000, right? Then year two, henceforth, year two, year three, I'll be working on reducing balance. That is to say the balance will be 500,000 times 25%, 500,000 times 25%, Till I deplete this asset of ours. This is what you are terming as equal installment. Very key that you should be able to understand. For those students whom we taught in 2022, we were talking of the balance on reducing balance. Because ideally, most of it, you are focused on some of the changes in 2021. But in 2022, these were amended. Majority of the items were amended towards 2021, uh, uh, maybe end of 2021, 2022. You'll find that a lot of things were amended and therefore you're talking of what? Equal installment, straight line, straight line, straight line method. Then talk of IBD. IBD, we used to talk of 10% reducing balance. But at this point, we'll be talking of what? 10% straight line basis. 10% straight line basis. 10% straight line basis. Uh huh. <coughs> Excuse. WTA will be having class A and class B. Class A and class B. Where class A we having, of course, what uh, we had uh, talked about, whereby at this point, remember. Bonimo mentioned that we'll be talking of what? Only two classes. The first class A, 25%. Class B, 10%. And in this case, remember, all of these, again, they are not on reducing balance, but they are on straight line basis. Straight line basis. That is to say, we are talking of what? Equal installment. Okay? So these are some of the key items in our second schedule, which you guys, you must be very keen with. In our next session, of course, I'll be doing a full question in relation to WTA for the purpose of the students who are doing exams so that they should always be updated on the same. These are very important and uh, ideally if we can check out uh, the second schedule so that you can clearly see what Mwalimu is talking about, so that you can clearly see here what Mwalimu is uh, talking about. Of course, you're going to have... Uh, we're going to have this. Let me let me share with you guys so that uh, you understand what Molimu is talking about. So I'm having our income tax act, income tax act, second schedule, income tax act, second schedule, income tax act, second schedule, and these are what it states. Uh huh. Now this is a second schedule of uh, our income tax act about investment allowances and uh i just will just do a brief analysis on this and uh, as i mentioned earlier on when i started this video you, you, you will always know that uh say for example you are in 2023 for the purpose of exams you guys will be tested with financial year ending 2022 those who are in uh, 2022 they were being tested with financial year ending uh 2021 so Ideally, that is to say, even this time round, when you'll be working it out, you'll have to make sure that your notes are also updated. You'll be uh, kind of uh, affected with all effects that happen in 2022. So, uh, looking at this case, you'll find that we're having, of course, uh, capital expenditure incurred in terms of building, hotel buildings, uh, buildings used for manufacturers, uh, that is, hospital buildings, petroleum or gas storage. We're doing over 50% in the first year of use. 50% in the first year of use. Whereas in this case, you'll find that uh, the residual value now, the residual value of the items that we mentioned above there, that will be 25% per year in equal installments. 
and we are talking about equal installment basically in this case we are looking at what we are talking of as if you're talking of straight line method remember in 2021 we are talking of reducing balance in 2021 we are talking of reducing balance for those who sat for the exams last year we are using reducing uh, 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 reducing balance because all the effects were as per 2021 now for you guys who will be sitting exams in 2023 onwards unless things change you will be dealing with what straight line method that is very important that you know that is very very important that you note so residual value is basically 25 percent per year in equal installment ideally these are items for id talk about ibd which we mentioned aspect of educational buildings including uh, student hostels talk about commercial buildings we are talking of uh, it uh, that is of course uh, 10 percent per year in equal installment that is 20 percent per year that is uh, talk about what talk about equal installment is straight line straight line basis straight line basis straight line basis then here we are talking of uh, basically machinery of course items that are used also in uh, manufacturing these items you're talking of machinery which will include machinery used for for manufacture hospital equipment ships or aircrafts talk about uh, that is a 50 percent in the first year residual value we are talking of 4 to 5 percent per year in equal installments then all these other elements of course i'll be explaining them as as we proceed so molimu just wanted us to see also what has been stipulated in our income tax act and i'm really repeating this that is to say from this year onwards 2023 in terms of uh, or rather when you're looking at it for the purpose of exams you'll find that you're going to be tested in the financial year ending 2022 and therefore you have to effect these changes of what of straight line basis so these changes are very important that you should be updated with them uh, looking at that then maybe you can proceed to the next change that again we must be very good at this second change that uh, i'll also want us to also be very familiar with is the concept to do with cgt you've heard of cgt capital gain tax right capital gain tax capital gain tax common name as what cgt also these are also very key concepts that i'll also want to elaborate more so for students who will also be sitting for the exams from 2023 henceforth okay so this capital gain tax remember according to the finance act 2022 or the amendments that are also were done on uh, the finance act 2022 these are what will affect us these are what will basically affect us that is a uh, talk of our uh, finance act 2022 so finance act 2022 amended this capital gain tax from the rate of five percent to 15 percent okay but the catch word here, here is with effect okay with effect from first january with effect from first january 2023 with effect from first january 2023 so this is a what you must always be very keen with my good students if at all you get a question that is asking you to determine a capital gain tax say for the month of november 2022 kindly always recall very quickly that five percent is applicable in 2022 but in the event that you get a question asking you on a period which is in 2023 say like feb 2023 you need to determine the capital gain on a transaction that took place in feb 2023 therefore that is when you must apply what 15 percent but any transaction which took place that is uh, of course uh, 2022 backwards always remember that it is five percent this applies to any student who is doing tax and is within the jurisdiction of Kenya. Regardless of whether you're doing course at Kestra, 
regardless of whether you're doing cast neck exams, regardless of whether you're doing neck exams. This is very important that you understand that yes, this is as per the Finance Act 2022, which was passed, but remember the effect is from 1st January 2023. Very important, my good students, that you must always tend to recall that, that you must always tend to recall that. So that is in relation to capital gain tax. Then as I finish, I'll also want us to look at the concept that is always very important for majority of the companies which are usually financed with more of debt than equity. And this concept is the concept to do with the thin capitalization. Thin capitalization. Thin capitalization. So these are concepts whereby it normally suggests that uh, a company is financed more, is financed with more of debt than equity, and usually ratio of three is to one, where three is debt and one is equity. So if we compare our capital structure, you'll always find that debt is always more than three times equity. It's always more than three times of equity. So majority of the companies are uh, ideally they used to use this concept basically <coughs> excuse to reduce their tax obligation. But with the changes which was done in Finance Act 2022, but with effect with effect from first January 2023, at any given point, whenever you're having a company that has 30% in excess, this is, we are talking of interest, right? So 30% in excess of earnings before interest and tax. Therefore, the 30% will be taken as non-allowable expense. And this is what we are referring to as what? Interest restriction. This is what we are referring to as interest restriction. This is not only for students, but also for you, accountant who is uh, working in such a time that you come across an interest and that you must do a test, therefore, that will be required you for you to do a test, that if at all you're having an interest, which is more, which is 30% in excess, 30% interest that is 30% in excess of earnings before interest and tax, therefore, that interest above, say, like 30, so you've, uh, maybe you're having an interest and you've realized that uh, maybe it's 31%. So therefore, the 1%, that is, uh, the basically, that is uh, what is now, what is now excess of that 30, right? Therefore, that should be taken as non-allowable expense. You're not going to reduce it. The way we normally tend to reduce our interest as part of allowable expense. Very important to note. But again, you must also come to an agreement that with that interest restriction, there are exemptions. And these exemptions basically will include assuming I'm having a company, not assuming, but financial institutions are exempted from interest restriction. To what happened in 2020, right? An year that we'll never forget. COVID-19. Black Swan event that kind of uh, stopped the economy of the world. So in this case, you'll find that uh, whenever I'm having a manufacturing company that manufactures human vaccine, therefore this will also be restricted from interest restriction according to the Finance Act 2022. You'll also find that uh, I'm having a company with an investment of more than 5 billion shillings of course that's a huge amount so also such company will also be rest, uh, will also be exempted from interest restriction concept so these are some of the items that you must always tend to be having at your fingertips <coughs> remember excuse that tax is always a very interesting and a very dynamic unit that you must always tend to remain updated with the changes and understand when are these changes applicable and when am I supposed to do it? To use these changes or rather whatever that has, whatever that has been amended. So to make it much clearer as we are concluding this uh, session is that for tax purposes, for tax purposes, 
we must agree one thing that number one we must agree one thing that number one for capital allowances for capital allowances for capital allowances reducing balance we no longer use reducing balance for residual value but we'll be using straight line straight line method or equal installment for for the residual values capital gain tax so long as you're dealing with an item that is uh, in a financial year 2023 that is when the effect of 15 percent will apply for examination purposes but in practice of course you're going to apply the 15 percent also on the same case you'll also find that we've also talked about the concept of thin capitalization concept and molimo has explained that very clearly so to this point guys i'm urging you like if at all you're using the notes that are previously for 2022 i'll advise you that you change the notes immediately or the specific areas that have been amended make sure that you're having them at your fingertips because yeah majority of the concepts of course are the same but for these rates that's where you'll find that a student will fail a paper that he was very good at in tax and he, he or she will be like what has happened these changes are very important so the same note, if you guys have not subscribed to our packages, either I'll wish you guys to do right now if you're doing tax for examination purposes. So for practice, ideally, any changes with effect from 1st January, of course, you're going to apply them in practice. That's what you must be having in mind. So we look at it in two perspectives, and I believe you guys at least you've learned something. And by the way, as we also summarizing, suppose you're having any issue with tax practical now practice suppose you're having any issue with tax i'm having a farm i really did associates you can check out our website and see the services that we're offering i really did associates i really did associates .com. you can check out our website and reach us out in the event that you need any assistance on matters relating to tax that is we're talking of it in practice right maybe you need a tax compliance certificate for your business and uh, you've tried your best uh, you you kind of uh, no, you've not managed to to achieve that maybe in this case uh, you are under a special rate bit you know that there are companies that have been taken under the special table right special table for VAT yeah you right now you can't file your VAT if while you are being told to visit your tax center, of course, you can always reach us out. And basically anything relating to tax, my good students, uh, you can always uh, reach us out and we'll always be there to assist you. That is also in practice. So at this point, guys, Molimu will want to wish us all the best. We meet in our next session and analyze other changes that we mentioned. Because recall, we've only looked at only three. But there are almost like 10 changes that were made which you must always be having at your fingertips. To this point, guys, you have a nice time and let us link. Thank you.